In this video, we're going to look at two-dimensional motion problems. In a two-dimensional motion problem, the object travels both horizontally and vertically. So whenever we see this curved path, we have to treat the problem a little bit differently. So in our first problem, a student fires a cannonball horizontally from a height of 51 meters with a speed of 37 meters per second. Neglect drag. All right, to set this problem up, I need to break this into two parts. So we have our horizontal part of the problem. So x means horizontal, which means left and right. I'm going to write initial speed, average speed, final speed, distance, time, and acceleration. And I have my y part of the problem, which means up and down. So I have initial speed, average speed, final speed, distance, time, and acceleration. In this problem, I will need a total of 5 given. All right, I see two numbers in the problem. So it says a student fires a cannonball horizontally from a height of 51 meters. This 51 meters describes the height of this building, which is a vertical distance. So underneath y, I'm going to write that my distance is 51 meters. Then we see the speed is 37 meters per second. 37 meters per second describes the speed to the right. And so my initial speed is all directed horizontally at 37 meters per second. Next I know that this is a free fall problem. So I know that gravity will pull downwards causing the acceleration to be 10 meters per second squared. For y, since nothing is pulling left or right, the horizontal acceleration is zero. This gives me a total of four given, so I'm just missing one. The fifth given comes from the fact that the object is launched to the right, so it starts with no vertical speed. So the speed in the y direction is going to be zero. In most problems, I'll start with the vertical side, and in this case, I see I have three given over here, so I know I can solve my y side of the problem first. Since I have distance and acceleration, and since my initial speed is zero, I can start by saying my time will be equal to the square root of 2d divided by acceleration. Going ahead and plugging that in, I get the square root of 51, sorry, square root of 2 times 51 divided by 10, and that gives me 3.19 seconds. All right, next I can use the fact that final speed equals initial speed plus acceleration times time. Since the initial speed was zero, I can just do the acceleration times the time and get 31.9 meters per second. Dividing that by two gives me the average speed. which is 15.95 meters per second. All right, so next I want to come up, go over and solve the x side of the problem. Well, the object would travel downwards for 3.19 seconds. That's also going to be the same amount of time that the object travels to the right. So my time will still be 3.19 seconds. Next, an acceleration of zero means the horizontal speed will be constant. So 37 meters per second will be my initial average and final speed. And lastly, I cal calculate my distance by doing average speed times time. And that gives me 37 times 3.19, or 118 meters. All right, filling out my answers. What was the cannonball's initial horizontal speed? Well, that was that all 37 meters per second were directed horizontally. The initial vertical speed, since the ball was just moving right at the start, the initial vertical speed was zero. The ball remained in the air for a total of 3.19 seconds. And the ball landed, the distance the ball landed from the building would be measured right here, which would be a horizontal distance of 118 meters. 
All right, let's take a look at one more problem. So in this problem, it says a student fires a cannonball diagonally with an initial speed of 44 meters per second, neglect drag, and the initial height of the ball. So once again, I need to set up my x part of the problem. So x meaning horizontal or to the right, initial speed, average speed, final speed, distance, time, acceleration. And the same thing for the y component of the problem. So initial speed, average speed, final speed, distance, time, acceleration. All right, so we're looking for five givens again. The first one is this angle is given to us as 58 degrees. Next one says the cannonball was launched diagonally with an initial speed of 44 meters per second. My initial speed it says it's diagonal, so I'm going to put that on here, my initial speed of 44 meters per second on that diagonal vector. All right, again, this is free fall, so I know that my acceleration for y is 10 meters per second squared, and for x is 0. Again, that's because gravity pulls down, but there's no force acting to the left or right. All right, next thing I want to do, well, still, we have there's our second given, third given, and fourth given. I like to attack this problem by saying when the ball reaches the highest point, so the ball reaches its highest point right here, it's going to be traveling to the right only, which means at this time there's no vertical speed. So I'm going to say my final vertical speed is zero, and for the vertical case, that means I'm only looking at the first half of the problem. There are multiple different ways to attack this problem, but I think this is the way that I like to do it. All right, so I've got my five given, but I don't have enough given under x or under y to solve. The first thing I need to do in this problem is a little bit of trigonometry. So I'm going to draw my components on here. So S, Y, S, IY, so my initial vertical speed, I'm going to draw that way. That shows how fast the ball was moving just upwards at the start of the problem. And SIX, the initial horizontal speed. We can think of that as how fast the ball's shadow is moving at the start of the problem. It's time to do a little bit of trigonometry. So this is my angle theta right here. I know the diagonal is the hypotenuse. The adjacent will touch the angle. And the opposite be on the other side from the angle. Skipping my trigonometry a little bit, I know that ex the adjacent side will equal h times cosine theta, and my opposite side will equal h times sine theta. If I plug those in, so I'm going to plug in 44 cosine 58. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, and you'll get 23.3 meters per second for the horizontal and 44 sine of 58 gives me 37.3 meters per second. I feel good about these answers because my hypotenuse is always the largest and in this case since this was an angle steeper than 45 degrees my initial horizontal speed is the smallest. So I can now take these and put these into my x and y parts of the problem. So 23.3 meters per second will be in the initial horizontal speed and 37.3 meters per second will be the initial vertical speed. Alright, next step is I see I, I now have three things in the y part of the problem so I can go ahead and solve this but I want to keep in mind for why we're only looking at the first half of the problem. Alright, so first I want to get my average speed, which is just halfway between my initial and final. So I just take my initial and divide by 2, since the final was 0. So 37.3 divided by 2 gives me 18.65, keeping at least 3 sig figs, meters per second. Alright, next I can find the time. So if I know that the time will equal the final speed minus the initial speed, divide by the acceleration. 
since the initial speed is 0, I can just do 37.3 divided by 10, and that gives me 3.73 meter, uh, excuse me, 3.73 seconds. This makes sense to me because the speed's decreasing by 10 meters per second each second, so 40 meters per second would have given me 4 seconds, so I feel good about my 3.73 seconds. Then to get the distance, I can do average speed times time, or 3.73 times 18.65, and that gives me 69.6 meters. So this 69.6 meters is showing me the vertical distance from the ground up to the highest point. It's my vertical distance. Alright, moving over to the X side. Now for X, the ball travels to the right not just for half the time, but for the entire time. So for X, I want to look at the whole problem. So to do this, I'm going to take my time. And I'm going to multiply that time by 2. which gives me 7.46 seconds. So again, it took 3.73 seconds to reach the highest point. So to come back down, I'll take another 3.73 seconds and give me 7.46 seconds total. While the ball's in the air, there's no horizontal forces, so the horizontal speed will remain constant at 23.3 meters per second. And I can get my distance just by doing average speed times time. And again, I'm using the 7.46 times 23.3. And I get 174 meters, which is that yellow distance. All right, filling out my answers on the left side. As you're actually doing positive physics, it's a good idea to check these answers as you go. So the initial horizontal speed was 23.3 meters per second. The initial vertical speed was 37.3 meters per second. The cannonball rose for a total of 3.73 seconds, making the total flight time time twice that of 7.46 seconds. The cannonball's maximum height, well height is the distance and height is also vertical, so that was my vertical distance of 69.6 meters. And how far away from the cannon did the ball land? That would be measured along the ground, so that's a horizontal distance of 174 meters.